As a car guy and a detailing nerd, I love cool tools. Everything from a three cent piece, the Kevin Brown special, to a $3,000 gloss meter, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and everything in between. We got light stands, lights, we got hangers, brushes, and gloves. It'll be a fun episode. That and more coming up on Drive and Protect. Uh, all the way in so that they sit on top of each other. Oh. Touch up paint on. I can hear it. Okay, so I'm gonna try to talk about each one of these individually, and you can imagine after SEMA, I went a little bit crazy when I saw all these things there. Of course, I had to have them. This one in particular is the scan grip. Now, what I really like about this, uh, aside from having all kinds of lights, and I'll show you uh, in their little series, uh, let me back up. As a detailer, you know, lighting is key. You know, we did this whole thing with the 65K up here, and you need to see in my garage, so nobody can argue that. But uh, as you know, I'm mobile, and some people are fixed. And so I guess what I'm saying is between the difference in cars, meaning there's some cars that are black and white and different sizes and shapes, and the fact that people are mobile or you know, on, in a shop location, your light needs to be able to change uh, and, and adapt to that. And so this is what's really cool about this light. In particular, if you see here, it's not the entire shield here, the entire face isn't one of those reflective things. Like in the old halogen lights, they used to put that uh, you know, kind of like tin foil thing. Obviously, as detailers, we know that that totally messes up the light and it forms a little ring. So you don't have that right off the bat, which is cool. The other thing that's interesting about this light is on the back here, you can see you can actually change your lumen. You can change from you know, 4,500 all the way up to 6,500. Why is that important? Well, let's talk about light absorption real quick. Uh, basically, if you have, uh, let's say, a light colored uh, Audi or something like that, like a gray or, or a white, when you put a certain amount of light on it, let's call it X amount of lumens for, for the argument's sake. If you put that much light on it, sometimes it'll wash it out. It'll just like, you can't even see what's going on. You can't, there's no, how do I say this? There's no contrast, right? For your eye to see the scratches. And if you can't see the scratches, you're kind of useless as a detailer in terms of removing uh, paint defects. You follow me? So if I had X amount of light on the, on the, uh, the light car and it's washing it out, you can't see anything, and I turn it over to let's say, you know, you know, my car over here, the black car, oh, now I can see it. So there's a difference, meaning cars require a different amount of lights, so a different kinds of lights. So what I, what I think is cool about this is you can manipulate the light and really control um, and allow you to see the different, uh, you know, scratches and things of that nature. So, and so I'll give you the, the, the rundown. They have a, um, you know, these little uh, stands here. One's on wheels, very sturdy. This other one is not on wheels, and I feel like you can park a car on it. It's nuts. I'll take a picture. You can't see it. It's on camera right now. Um, and they make this one up here uh, uh, battery powered too. So you can plug it in, and then you can uh, turn it on with no, with no battery, you know, with uh, no plug-in. And these you can hook into your belt, which I think is cool. It's a little bit, um, you know, a little bit bigger. See, there's a couple of different uh, levels. And then, of course, you know, the pen light. Uh, and this pen light is unbelievable. So it has a, a bunch of different options. They allow you to, to hang it on the wall and that sort of thing. Ooh, this one's kind of cool too. The headlamp, ooh, I'm gonna totally geek out with this. So you can put it on, because a lot of times I'm in a position um, where it's kind of challenging, where I can't really get a light in there. But you know, with all this, I like it all being one kit. So anyways, this is what I saw out there. Really, uh, really nice and I'm glad that I invested in this. So this is the first thing. Let's move on to the next. This is the Kevin Brown washer mod. And if you're a pro detailer, I'm sure you've heard all about this stuff. Um, and I wanted to bring it up again because I want to make uh, some clear points because there's a ton of controversy around it. So right off the bat, this is a normal washer that has been modified, hence the washer mod. Uh, what Kevin does is grind down the sides. I don't know if you can see it there, grind down the sides so it's no longer round. And then uh, uh, you know shave the top and the bottom to make it fit perfectly. So I'll give you a, a big disclaimer in where all this controversy comes from. If you put a regular round washer in there, it'll get jammed in the backing plate and cause a lot of issues uh, you know, where you can't get the backing plate off and things like that. So understandably so, it can be a pain in the butt for the manufacturer. So having said that, let's back up a little bit. The washer goes in the backing plate and the backing plate goes on uh, the tool. The reason, or what this does, that little space creates enough gap where the backing plate doesn't rub against the housing. So it free spins. So if you just take it and zzz, you know, you know, when it's on the machine, you go like this, it'll, it'll free spin. So that free spinning um, does something. And what it does is at a lower speed, it still encourages the 
rotation of the pad of the backing plate to occur. So that means you can use basically in, in another words or in other words you can use a lower speed and still get that rotation. That rotation is what we love. That's what really is is doing the work. The oscillation in the, in the throw is very helpful as well but that rotation uh, is doing a bunch of the chewing up and the eating uh, or leveling the paint. So with that understanding this little bit of space uh, encourages that. So it's basically making what I consider this machine to be a scalpel. It's making it even sharper. It's basically opening up the po polishing capabilities uh, or, or tolerances. Let's put it that way. So let me give you uh, a concrete example. So if, if we were to use uh, M101, which is a, a very thick abrasive, very good abrasive, and a, a microfiber cutting pad, if you fill that pad up with a compound and you put it on the paint, you're going to create uh, surface friction and that friction can slow or grab the rotation of the machine by putting this uh, space, in, in some cases, in this example, we're just using an example here. If you put uh, the spacer on it and it, it, it gives itself a little bit more free rotation uh, to fight that surface friction, you're not gonna slow down. And if you're not gonna slow down, you're gonna do more work. So that's kind of the theory. I just wanted to put it out there. Um, I know this isn't necessarily a new thing, but uh, I think it's so important and super geeky um, that I love it. And it's one of my favorite little um, things to, to talk about because it's just so cool. Oh, and if you're going to do it, and I know, again, there's a lot of controversy in the manufacturer back and forth, um, both good people. I think if you're going to do it, just do it right and get it from Kevin Brown. I'm not even saying buying it from Kevin Brown because it's like three or four cents or whatever. Uh, but he spends a lot of uh, crazy uh, psycho time on these things, grinding it a certain way. Um, so if you're going to do it, do it right. Just get it from Kevin. I'm sure he'll hook you up um, and, and don't cause the machine to break by doing it improperly. And then you, uh, you could potentially see the benefits of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, those attributes. Anyways, I wanted to make that clear because uh, this, is, this is super cool. So let me show you something else. All right, check this out. This is a gloss meter, a 60 degree gloss meter by Alcometer. Now, I want to back up before I start describing what this is and kind of give you the landscape of what we're talking about in terms of uh, tools and machines. Over here on the left hand side, we'll call it, is a paint depth gauge. We've talked about that a thousand million billion times. And that of course, for lack of uh, you know, a long description, it measures the amount of paint that's on a car. So you can, as a detailer, decide if it's worthy of detailing. Meaning you don't want to do harm to the paint. If there's not enough paint there, you can't polish it. Pretty simple. In the middle here, we have a gloss meter. What that does is measure the amount of gloss or the reflection in the paint. Pretty simple. Over here, you know, we don't have it, but we're gonna talk about it in another episode, is a thing called a profilometer. What that does is measure the topography of the paint. For lack of a you know, better example, put a pen on the paint, and as the pen goes up and down, like an EKG kind of thing, you can measure the amount uh, of the peaks and valleys of the paint, thus making it flat. You wanna make it flat, which is the most reflective or uh, paint is perfect. So that'll give you that reading. So let's come back. I just gave you the landscape. Now let's talk specifically about this one. This, as light hits the paint, this tool reads or calculates how much is bouncing off of it. I think this thing is so ridiculously cool and, and it's for a very uh, interesting reason. Detailing, as you all know, is a subjective art. Meaning I look at the paint and I say, oh, look at this beautiful Porsche. It's really shiny and then a uh, new person comes in and goes, yeah, that looks pretty good, but man, that could be a lot shinier. And you're like, what are you talking about? It's shiny. It's a subjective. You can't put a number on it. Guess what? Now you can. Obviously, this has been around, but um, you know, these, these are pretty ridiculously cool tools. So for me, the value of taking something that is subjective and putting numbers to it. So let me give you an example. And we're going to play with this. Uh, this is going to be fun. We're going to play with this old, uh, my little uh, scratch board back there, you know, an old panel. And I'll show you the difference. Um, so somebody walks into your shop or whatever and they say, uh, you know, you go up there and you put this on the paint and it says, you know, 52. I'm making an example. And when they come back, you put, show them again and it, hey, it's 92. So you've actually put numbers and proved that, is an in that it is in fact shinier. Here's a little bit of, uh, I don't want to say disclaimer, but something to keep in mind. This doesn't mean that the paint has been flattened. That doesn't mean that the paint has been polished or uh, uh, leveled. Okay, so those in the profilometer, those peaks and valleys haven't been squashed down because we know if we squash them and make them perfectly flat like a desert instead of the mountains, the light bounces off and it's, and it's, it's better. It's, uh, you know, show car, blah, blah, blah. This, in this example, 
if we have peaks and valleys and then I take uh, sealant, wax, coating, whatever, glaze, and jam it into those peaks and valleys so I can make a fake flatness, meaning put makeup on the car, uh, wax on the car, whatever, and you put this on here, it'll show an increase in shine because it's shinier. It does, it, that makes sense? But it doesn't mean that the paint is flat. I wanna get that point across. That's what the profilometer is. So in a future episode, we'll, we'll go through all the different machines and I'll show the, uh, um, what each one of them does. But this one here is off the charts. To take something subjective and put numbers to it, I, I don't know if there's a value that I can put to that because that is pretty freaking cool as far as I'm concerned. So let's go back here and play and I'll show you the, uh, the actual differences. So we're over by my test panel. And by the way, everybody should have a test panel because you can work on this and make mistakes and it's a great thing. I know I've talked about that a million times and this thing sits outside so I love to get it dirty. And as you can see, it's pretty dirty. Now, if I zoom in over here, this is a, a product years ago called, uh, I think it's never wet or never dry or something like that where you would spray on uh, like a brick and it wouldn't get wet. I, I wanted to see how it would do on a car. Clearly it turned it white and it wasn't very good, right? Uh, for this particular application. So this is a great example of something that's not shiny. And then there's some scratches. And then what I'm gonna do is wipe it down with just simple spray wax, spit spray wax, totally fine. And see the change in, in uh, you know, the variation of, of this. And then what we'll do is maybe put some wax on it or maybe polish it or something to show you the progression of how this um, actually works. All right, so um, let's put it on right now. Right now it's showing 0.1, and that seems very logical to me. Okay, 1.1, very, very low, extremely insanely low because this isn't very shiny, as you can see. So we'll go just one step over. It's pretty, uh, uh, you know, dirty and dusty. And so it's already up at 72.2. And go around the rest of the paint, right? 78, so it's not that great. Now there's a spot over here that's got some, like a smudge on it over, uh, I don't even know what it is, maybe from a tree, right? And it goes down to 34. So I'm gonna pull the camera in and what I'll do is I'm gonna spray wax this area. If you remember, let's see, let's do something here. All right. So basically this is about 74, 75 in between here. So I'm gonna go get a spray wax towel. Actually, I'll do it right now on camera. The spray wax towel, so you see there's no craziness. No, I'm running out of spray wax. I wish I knew a manufacturer. <laughs> so clean this up. All right. Let it dry. Let's see what it does. Right off the bat, 89. So you're saying to yourself, wow, how did it jump that high? It jumped that high because this thing is absolutely disgusting. So even if you just wipe down a dirty car, you're gonna have more shine. Remember, it's just it's specific on shine. So the next thing I wanna do is take some, uh, you know, maybe I can just polish this out real quick and see the difference again. So the point of me showing you this is to show the progression that this does actually, in fact, work. So if I just wipe this down, which was uh, again, it's 89, it just came out again. And there's a spot right here where it's just all mucky and something from a tree, because again, this sits outside. Put that on top of that, let's see. Do you see that there? This is 36. So there's a massive difference. I think I've proved, you know, proven my point. If I were to put wax on this, it'd probably go above 89, up to 90 or 92. If I were to compound this and polish it, it'd probably go up to 94 or 95. You get my point. So this is why I think this, uh, this tool is, is really cool. Uh, when demonstrating um, the level of cleanliness or the level of shine to a particular customer of yours. And that's a, that's a powerful tool. Now the last three items over here are pretty cool. I just wanted to show them to you because they're fun. But before we do, I have a little warning to let you know, I shot this segment of the video like two hours after I did that one because I started going around my car and testing uh, the gloss meter. So my warning to you is if you have OCD or if you're a crazy person, um, this tool can get you in trouble because you're going to play with it for a while and sort of like compete with yourself. Ooh, this panel's shinier than that panel. I lost my mind on that. So anyways, I got it all the way up to uh, uh, 98. So I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> all right, focus on the, the last three real quick is uh, my buddy Terry in the UK made these uh, Rupes holders uh, or polish holders, I should say. You can put any polisher you want on there, but see it back there? Uh, pretty Pretty uh, artsy, beautiful piece, and sturdy. 
um, and it's got uh, the ammo name engraved there. It's, it's just an, uh, a wonderful, uh, very light, um, beautiful piece of artwork. So uh, if you guys want some of these, let me know. I, you know, I don't manufacture these or make the, you know, or go crazy. I just kind of put my little final touches on there. And if you guys want some, we'll try to figure it out. I don't have a clue as to what they cost because it cost, you know, it was a hundred hours to do one of them because they're just fun. But uh, shoot me an email and we'll talk about that. All right. This is uh, some little tools I've been playing with where um, it's a little holder. You push it, I don't know if you saw that, and um, a little brush comes out. Now, in my uh, wheel cleaning video, I showed you a couple of these brushes. This is a dual one where you can push one. There's different shapes and sizes of uh, little toothpick kind of things. And I like using that on the vents or around the, uh, the radio dash buttons and, or the door buttons. And just to kind of get in and like flick something out, I think it's pretty neat. Now I'm playing with these. Uh, again, they're not for sale. I'm just uh, monkeying around, but shoot me an email if you think they're interesting. We can, uh, uh, I don't know, I'll do something in the future. And then these. I know this is like really weird. Why am I talking about gloves? Well, you know, I go to the track a whole lot and I do a lot of things with my wheels. And most of the time I have to pull the wheel off when it's a little warm, meaning I got to pull the wheel off to check the brakes or to do something or to change my slicks or whatever. Um, and these are fantastic. Why? These are the uh, Gorilla Grip, um, whatever they're called, Gorilla Grip, yeah. And typically my hands are wet or getting them wet or like when I did the, uh, the wheel episode where I'm cleaning uh, the wheels, I had to bring them outside and I needed uh, a little more uh, cushion, a little more strength. Sometimes I put um, the uh, latex gloves underneath them. But the point of the story is when these get wet, they're really grippy. I have no idea why, I don't really care why, but as soon as I grip something, I don't, I don't drop like a really expensive, beautiful wheel because this is so grippy. Anyways, these are throwaway gloves. I just geek out, I love stuff like this. Um, and then they make a, a version that I use a lot which is a uh, waterproof version as well, fully. So the back is waterproof as well. Anyways, these are the Gorilla Grips. They're like, I don't even know. They're very cheap and if you lose them, you're not gonna like freak out. So I like that kind of in between. Anyways, here's my cool uh, stuff that I think is awesome. Um, we're gonna do a lot more of these videos in terms of uh, you know, the latest technology, the coolest thing that's out there. This is just pure geekdom and, and I love it. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at larry at ammonyc.com. As always, thank you for watching and uh, give me your opinion on, on these particular things over here. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these brushes, but they're fun. I'm always tinkering and toying and messing around and these things, um, we'll figure something out. As always, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon.